Never mind that. Come on, get out. Get on that horse. them over. You stay up there, driver. The rest of you line up. Where I come from, men don't manhandle women. Now, help her back in the coach, polite-like. Now, get over there. I'll trouble you for that box. Get up on the seat. Drive on. Better stay where you are, mister. Yeah, and you better stay out of other people's business. Sure went to a lot of trouble to draw a blank, partner. But I gotta hand it to you. It was kinda neat the way you slipped up on us all cold that way. Say, strange around here, ain't you? Well, if it's any of your business, I'm from down El Paso way. Name's Carter. You don't mean Ed Carter? What about it? Oh, uh, nothing. Uh, we wasn't aiming to hurt that girl. Just doing a little job for the boss. Bart Lane, up at the Burton Ranch. Oh. Yeah, I've heard of some queer doings up that way. Well, you heard right. Say, I'll bet the boss would sure like to get a man of your caliber to join up with him. Oh. Say, could use a good hideout for a spell. Well, that's sure it. It's a good hideout, all right. There ain't nobody can get in that me and Lane don't want in. <laughs> What's the boss gonna say about you letting this fella turn the girl loose on us? Oh, uh, I reckon getting Ed Carter to join up with us will square that. Say, you boys go back and get Joe. What was you aiming to do with that girl? Oh, nothing. You see, she's the new nurse that Lane don't want. He's got one that suits him. <laughs> hey, I don't get the layout. Uh, is Lane sick? No. He's keeping old Sarah, the owner of the ranch, sick so she can't interfere with his personal deal. <laughs> well, I see. Say, you boys are pretty smart. <laughs>
Mrs. Sarah Burton is expecting me. You follow the path to the road, ma'am, and the road leads right to the house. We'll bring your grip up later. Oh, it's not heavy, thank you. I can carry it. Thank you. Wayne must have changed his mind about having Buck take that gal off the stage, huh? I can't see what's wrong with the girl we have, Mrs. Burton. She's a trained nurse. But I don't like a person, I don't like them. Uh-oh, -uh. now don't excite yourself, Mrs. Burton. Well, what do you want? Uh, here's a list of the groceries that I got to get out of town, Miss Burton. Uh, uh, two bags of flowers and uh, 25 pounds of coffee and uh, 100 pounds of sugar and... Uh, Why doesn't the stage deliver this stuff as they always have? Well, you see, Miss Burton, uh, the gate that's... Uh, uh, you don't understand, Mrs. Burton. The stage line has changed their route. They don't come within a mile of the ranch. Funny we wasn't notified. We was, I... I'm sorry I forgot to tell you. Pencil. Mm -hmm. I'm going, Mrs. Burton. Lane will pay you off. Give that list to Joe. He'll get the stuff. Why'd you give in to that old hen? That's my business. You put up at a hotel in town and stick around. I may need you. You'll get paid every week. Well, see that I do. You keep away from that house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wish I was out of them gates. My mama told me so. She sure did. I wish I was chopping cotton. A bow we were sure would look good to me now. Are you Mrs. Burton? Yes. And you're Mary's daughter. I'd have known you anywhere. Dr. Dolson, this is Martha Williams, daughter of an old friend back in Ohio. Oh, welcome, Miss Williams. I'm pleased to meet you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Dolson. Now, dear, tell me about your mother. How is she? Just fine. She sent you her love. She hopes you'll be better mm -hmm. soon. <gasps> I get weaker every time I take a dose of this medicine. Why is it? Why, that's the immediate reaction that you must expect, Mrs. Burton. In the end, you'll regain your strength. You'll see that Mrs. Burton gets her medicine regularly, won't you? The directions are on the bottle. I will, Doctor. Any other orders? No, none at present. If you'll go right back there, dear, the housekeeper will show you to your room. Goodbye, Mrs. Burton. Good luck. Something slipped. Buck failed to stop the new nurse. Do you think you can handle her? Well, I don't know. Yet. Well, make it your business to know. Yeah, but I gotta draw the line somewhere, Lane. I remember the time when you weren't so careful to draw the line. Yes, I know. Yeah, but uh, 
If I don't get results, you know what to expect. All right, Lane. That's better. the girl, boss, but this fella got the drop on us and turned her loose. Who is he? Ed Carter, the toughest umbry in South Texas. Yeah, I heard of him. What's he doing here? Well, he was after the money on the stage. <laughs> He's looking for a hideout for a spell. I thought maybe you could use him. Gus, do you know him? Well, we've all heard of him aplenty. Got any proof you're Red Carter? Man in my business just don't carry credentials around with him. Put him on, Buck. I'll talk to him later. Sure. Check up on that, Buck. I'll be along shortly. All right. Find them, Sam. Hiding in a line shack. Claim they're duck hunters, but I think they're the law. What are you doing with them? I'm going to pardon them. You gents are getting a break. Follow me. Now, if you can get around that bend in the road before I get you, you're free. Now start running. Firefight in you. Get up. What's the trouble here? Sam, what have I told you about fighting? If you stand for this kind of stuff, I don't want to have anything to do with your layout. What are you talking about? Well, there are no wings sprouting on my shoulder. But I never in all my life shot a man in the back. I'm still asking what happened. Who is this maverick? Bad man to fool with. That's Ed Carter. Ed Carter? Does this coyote claim he's Ed Carter? Yes. Don't you remember last week when Tony Romero passed through? He said that Ed Carter was in jail in El Paso. He's right about was in jail in El Paso. But you know, this time of year, it gets kind of warm down that way. Too warm. <laughs> so I busted out and came up here, where it's cooler. I don't believe it. There ain't no rat hold in that new jail. Take a look at this. Where'd you find this? On the ground. Ed must have dropped it when he went after Sam. Yeah, I pulled him off of trees as I rode north. Look here, mister. Uh, is you the man that killed them eight men up there in that Abilene holdup? That's a lie. There's only six. 
I still don't believe he's Ed Carter. Then what's his picture doing on that poster for Dane Hill? Buck, come over to my office tonight and bring Carter with you. Yeah. In the meantime, get the cattle ready for an early morning start. All right. Let me have that. I sure wish I was out of them gates. My mama told me. She sure did. Good. Pop good. Yeah. Oh. This bill of sale only calls for 500 head. Can't you send more in this rising market? I want to put a few more pounds on them, Sarah. That'll be the next trip. Well, that's the man who forced me from the stagecoach. And he's the man that stopped him. Are you sure, Martha? Well, of course I am. What about it, Lane? First I knew about it. I sent Buck to meet the coach and bring her in. I didn't know he got rough with her. Why, boss, I... It's I, too I... late for excuses. You're fired. Get out. Thanks, Ed. You happened along at the right time. This is Ed, Sarah. Howdy, Ed. I do. And Miss Williams. Howdy. I just hired him today. I think I picked a good man. I had no opportunity to thank you this morning, but, well, I want you to know I appreciate what you did. Oh, that's all right. I think I'll do it again. I'm not firing Buck. I had to do something to satisfy those women. But I can't send him in charge of this drive. I want you to take that 5,000 head over the line. You mean 500, don't you? No. Sarah gets a return on the 500. You're plenty smart, Lane. Smart as a fox. Two foxes. <laughs> there are thousands of head of cattle on this place, and there's nothing to stop us from getting most of them. Nice break for you. If you stick around, I'll stick. See you in the morning. How's your patient? I'm worried about her. Why? Well, well, I believe I can tell this to you. It's the medicine that's making her weaker instead of stronger. Well, why don't you try stopping it for a while? Give her water in place of the medicine. That's an idea. It couldn't hurt her any. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty guitar. Belong to you? No, Chappie left it here. Well, they should try tuning it sometime. <laughs> when the sun's in the west And I lie down to rest I cling to the rose of my dream Neath a blanket of stars with a breeze 
on that girl, aren't you? Oh, just making a little music. <laughs> you call that music? <laughs> well, I guess she does. But don't let it go too far. Hey, wait a minute. You listen to me. I hired out here as a ranch hand. And I'm not gonna take orders in my personal affairs from you or anybody else. That's not an order, Ed. We have work to do and no time and for about them locked gates out there. I'm going in and out of this place whenever I feel like it. <laughs> That's all right with me. Now you turn in and I'll see you in the morning. Miss Williams. In protecting a large ranch like this, I'm obliged to hire some very tough men. And I wouldn't advise a close friendship with any of them. Are you referring to Ed? Yes, and all the others. But Ed's so nice. Look at that. Not so nice there, eh? I understand. Well, thank you, and I'll be more careful in the future. Martha! Excuse me. Good night. Counting all your Mr. Buck, you can put it in your pocket. Ain't no use you wrestling around no saddle roll. Yeah, I reckon you're right. It's the women, Chappie. No wonder I ain't got nothing. The women gets all my money, but I was sure counting on saving something out of this next shipment. Where are you going? I'm pulling out of here. You fired me, didn't you? Well, didn't you see me wink? Sure, but I figured you got some dust in your eye. You would. Now, on account of what happened, I can't send you in charge. So I'm sending Ed along. But I want you to keep a close watch on him. You'll get my same split? Sure, don't worry about that. Say, Sam's on the gate tonight, isn't he? Yeah. Well, come on. I want to talk to him, too. Here, it, Jeffy. Give that Dodd Wine and Weatherwalk permission to go into town. Gave him permission to go through the gate. Why do you suppose a man hiding out wants to show his face in town? Darn if I know. Well, we'll ride after him and find out. Come on, Sam.
Rip it down. I said rip it down. Now get inside. Sit down. Got any more of these? Yes. I'll get them and tear them up. Come on. Before he sees a spy on me. I'm sorry, Bob. Three fellows followed me in from the ranch and were watching. Uh, I had to pull that stunt on you. <laughs> Tell the truth, I thought you'd gone crazy. <laughs> hey, those close to shore work, Bob. I thought for a moment you were going to make me eat them. <laughs> I just rode in to tell you that I'm leaving in the morning in charge of a trail herd from the ranch. Selling them? Practically stealing them. I hate to do it, but it's the only way that I can get positive proof on Bart Lane. And it's about time. Two men I sent in there the other day haven't reported back. They won't either, Bob. I saw what happened to them. That makes more than ten men that have disappeared in that ranch in the past year. You've got to head this thing off, Tex. Lane's chickens are on the way to roost. Right now. Think your plan will work? Well, I thought my head off. There's no other way. We'll just have to trust to luck. You're the doctor. I'll be ready. Goodbye, Marshal. Goodbye. Miss Williams. We're leaving on the trail drive. I just wanted to say goodbye. <laughs> what do you reckon, Miss Saylor? Maybe she's like me, but she don't like people, she don't like them. I guess it's a good thing I'm leaving. Here are your papers. This is the bill of sale. And this is the address of Amos Mosley, our wildcat buyer. Here's the name of the banker to contact. All right, Mr. Lane. Cattle are moving already. You better hurry to catch up. So long. Good luck.
he smashed me when I wasn't looking. And if Lane hadn't stopped us, I'd have took that hombre apart. Why don't you tell him instead of me? I'm going to, when he comes back from night hawking. There he is. Why don't you tell him now? Well, this'll soon be over. We ought to hit Galerville sometime tomorrow. Yep. We haven't lost a steer on the way. I do the same. <laughs> Suppose you play us a piece while I go get you all something to eat. Well, I'm not hungry. All I want is a cup of coffee. Hey, Chappie. Sir? Where'd you ever get a good-looking guitar like this? <laughs> Miss Bird bought me that for Christmas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Say, believe I'll take a cup of coffee myself. Make it yellow. Go ahead. Make it yellow. Color don't make any difference. Take you, for instance, Chappie. Your skin's dark, but your heart ain't all shriveled up like somebody I know. Sure enough. You see, Chappie, it's like this. Some people are like your guitar. Empty heads. Born with a discord. Others are decent and fine. In harmony with the world. You sure do know the human race. And music, too. Thanks, Chappie. Say. How'd you ever get the name of Chappie? Well, you see, Miss Ed, it's like this. Everybody in our family is named after somebody in the good book. So the first name they come to was Chapter One. <laughs> That's me, Chappie for short. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you got any brothers or sisters? Uh, yes, sir. We are nearly up to the 12 apostles right now. <laughs> uh, the last report. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, say, uh, Chappie, as we rode up while ago, I heard you playing the Bow Weevil song. The Bow Weevil. You like that? Yes, sir. That's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> now, look at you. Uh, Miss Ed, does you like it? Let's go. <laughs> oh, the Bow Weevil lamb, a little black buck, come from Mexico, they say. Come all the way to Texas. Just a looking for a place to stay, just a looking for a home, <laughs> just a looking for a home. Yes, yes. Now the first time I see the bow weaver, mm. he was sitting on the square. The next time I see the bow weaver, he had all his family there, just a looking for a home, <laughs> just a looking for a home. Now the farmer taking the bow weaver, and he put him in the hot sand. The weaver said, this is mighty hot. But I'll stand it like a man. This will be my home. It'll be my home. Now the farmer takes this bold weevil and puts him in a lump of ice. The bold weevil said to the farmer, This is mighty cool and nice. It'll be my home. This will be my home. The farmer say to the weevil, what make your head so red? <laughs> the weevil say to the farmer, it's a wonder I ain't dead. Uh, looking for a home, looking for a home, just, just looking, looking for a home. Now the merchant got half the cotton, the bow weevil got the rest. He did. Didn't leave the farmer's wife but one old cotton dress and it's full of home. <laughs> it's a full of home. Now the farmer said to the merchant, we is in an awful fix. The bow weevil ate up all the cotton and left us only a stick. We got no home. We got no home. We, we got, got no home. And the captain say to the missus, what do you think of that? The bow weevil done made a nest in my best Sunday hat. <laughs> Wanna have a home? Wanna have a home? Now if anybody should ask you who it was that made this song, 
Just tell them twas a dark complexed fella with a pair of blue duckies on. Oh, ain't got no home. Got no home. Ain't got, got no home. Now the bow weaver say to the farmer, you better leave me alone. I done it all your cotton and now I gonna start on your corn. <laughs> here to stop you now. Medicine. Look how much better you are since you stopped taking it. I'll soon be riding the range again. See what's what. I don't know what I'd have done without Lane during my illness. Guess I better talk to him about firing that quack doctor. Oh, wait until you're better, Mrs. Burton. Then you can do it yourself. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Send me on ahead to tell you we got through without losing a single steer out of the 5,000 head. Did you have any trouble? Oh, uh, Sam flared up and Ed had to take him apart. Ed's a good man. I'm glad I got him. All right, Boney. Start checking up on that next bunch of cattle. All right. Aren't you a little afraid about taking on new men just at this time, Lane? Not in this case. No. There's a reward hanging on Ed's head. I can turn him in at any time. And don't forget, he's got about 40,000 stashed away from that last bank robbery. Oh, I never thought of that. Now, about the old woman. She's getting better every day. I'm not going to talk to you again about this. I give you my word, Bart, that I'm doing everything I can. Say, are you sure that... Oh. So, you're in on this, too. Get off of the ranch, both of you. And don't dare come back. You're a little too late, Sarah. I'm running this ranch and giving all the orders around here. Not anymore, you ain't. I'm calling in the rangers. No one goes in or out of this place without my say-so. Open up these gates. I got business in there. What do you want? Black Watson sent me to see Bart Lane. Do I get in or don't I? I'll take you to Lane. Nobody leaves this ranch without my permission. Get it? Black Watson sent this man, Lane. Well, Black told me you had a man here that calls himself Ed Carter. Is that any of your business? Plenty. When that happens to be my name. <laughs> well, somebody's lying. Just about what I expected. You know who this fella is? That's Tex Lowry, the lawman. 
I know, because he's the only man that ever put me in jail. Well, I'm not taking your word for it. But if Black Watson knows this man, I'll get proof from him. Black knows Tex, all right. Gus, ride over to the border and have Watson verify this. And hurry up. Watching us like as if we were criminals. If Lane hadn't taken all the guns out of the house, I'd have given them something to remember. I told you to keep them in the house. Lock that door. Speedy trip, Ed. Good work. Buck, you and Sam come into the office. The rest of you go to the corral. A lot of cattle moving now, boss. Sounds good. Yeah, we got top prices. Fine. Ah, I see you got cashier's checks. Safer. Never know what'll happen. Good idea. A crooked buyer might have hooked us and we'd have no comeback. Hey, uh, me and Sam got some coin coming from the last deal. Can we get it? Sure. I'll take care of you now. Well, I guess I'll go and unsaddle. Nothing else, is it? Not now. Go ahead, Ed. Tex Lowry, or I'll eat my hat. Well, Chappie, there's sure been plenty of rumors around here since we was away. Meaning which? Some of them we showed up claiming to be Ed Carter. Of course, we'll know for sure when Gus gets back from the border. And beside that, they got old Sarah Miguel held prisoner up at the house. My goodness! Uh, Mr. Ed, it's another Ed Carter done showed up on this ranch. And he got Miss Sarah and that other lady locked up. I feel in my bone that that won't be trouble. Thanks, Chappie. But how did his picture get on that poster? I guess I ought to be back any minute now and... That'll settle this argument. Open up, it's guys. It's him. It's him, all right. You mean the picture on the poster is Tex Lowry? Yeah, Black Watson knows him well. And this is Ed Carter. Blackie sent him up here. I've been waiting for this chance. Hold on there. He's mighty dangerous till you get that gun off of him. Yeah. We've got to make it look accidental, like all the others. Why not pardon him? Like he's just another trespassing duck hunter. Look, we'll meet you back at the bunkhouse. Get some men. All right.
Nobody got by us. Marshal.
What are you going to do? I'm going to give you boys a little dose of your own medicine. I'm going to pardon you. Now, if you can get around that bend before I shoot you, you'll be free as a bird. You're a law officer. You wouldn't do that. Wait, wait. Th that's murder. You, you, you can't shoot a man in the back. Young man, Lane's fired. You're a foreman. Chappie told me plenty. Sorry. I'm not your foreman. Lane's going to jail. And here's your money from the last trail drive. We rounded up all that wasn't laying flat permanent. Well, that's fine, Marshal. Here's a couple of more for your collection. Thanks, Tex. Nice work. Come on, you crooks. Tell me something. How did your picture get on that poster? Oh, that's a secret. I'll explain it to you sometime. Come and get it before I throws it away. <laughs> <laughs>